thank you for the lovely intro and um, we're happy to be here. My name is Friedrich, I'm from Bitwig and today we're going to talk about, as Tim already <laughs> mentioned, the integration of Bitwig Studio with hardware, namely uh, Eurorack systems and analog, analog synthesizers. Um, it's going to be a very specific workshop today. We're not going to talk about all the different things that Bitwig Studio can do. You know, like um, how we handle plugins or how you can edit audio or how you can collaborate with other people, um, what the library is about. That's not going to be part of what's going to be shown today. We're only going to focus on, on the hardware integration and um, a few different things that you can do with, with that. Um, I've been making music myself since the mid 90s. I started with trackers and I've gone through a lots of different DAWs. I mostly worked in the box. I've been with Bitwig for about five years and ever since I w uh, um, started with Bitwig Studio, I can honestly say that my music production has changed a lot, especially with the release of version two, which was two years ago, where we had a lot of this CV um, hardware integration stuff and um, that kind of pushed me into this tangent of getting into modular and i have this system here today which is the uh, kind of result of all this of this journey that i'm on and um yeah that's what we're gonna show here today um between studio 2 was released two years ago like i said and it featured a lot of different kind of uh, cv tools you can send out clock you can send out cv you can send out gate and send back into between studio um, that's all happening kind of in the um, in what we call the device panel which is down below yeah the screen is up there so down below you have um, our device panel which consists of usually the, the instruments and audio effects note effects things like that the signal flow is from from left to right and what you see here is phase four which is our kind of flagship synthesizer with four oscillators followed by a bunch of audio effects so we will look at all that and i will kind of explain what i'm doing when i'm building my my different device chains um, later on we will also look at the grid which is our modular sound design environment that we released with b Studio 3 which came out earlier this year um, i don't yeah don't want to look at that now we'll look at that later um, it's a really fun environment to work with in its own to build synthesizers or drum machines or effects but also how it connects with the hardware which is I don't think the microphone is on at all actually so it's just for the people in the video later so yeah by the way if you're watching this on video in the future uh, <laughs> Greetings from the past. I hope the future is not as crappy as everyone fears it is. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so um, I can explain my setup real quick. Um, starting with this piece, this is a uh, Microsoft Surface Studio, which is a giant touchscreen computer, which is great to have in, in demonstrations like this because you can work with you know big movements and it looks very dramatic. But it's also fun to work with touch because it's a, it's a really fun way to work with, uh, with software. Um, this is in turn connected to, to this machine here, which is, uh, of course, a Eurorack system. Containing of a bunch of different modules, we have a few sequencers, um, a couple of different modulators like envelopes, LFOs, some oscillators, um, really kick-ass filter. And of course, this piece here, which is the ES8, is an audio interface, USB class compliant. It has eight analog outputs and four analog inputs. They are what's called DC coupled, which makes a lot of sense in this environment because that means that they are perfect for controlling modules using CV. Um, this is in turn connected to the mixer, and I'm sending out um, actually two stereo tracks out to the mixer. And that's why I'll, I'll be kind of grabbing here back and forth uh, during the, the presentation. Um, I thought of this workshop not like a master class or like a boring talky talky demonstration. It's more going to be me doing a bunch of different examples of uh, how I kind of 
yeah, my techniques on how I would make music using these two things together. And uh, it's going to be improvised. It's going to be starting from scratch almost every time. And you just have to kind of bear with me in those passages that might not make musical sense. But I'm sure we're going to have fun anyway together. Um, OK, maybe just a few simple words about Pitwi Studio, if we can bring that up on the screen. Um, as I mentioned, you have the, uh, the uh, device chain down below. Um, up here we have what we call the clip launcher, which is essentially like a, a sketch pad or a place to have your loops, your scenes, and you can uh, okay. Um, you can work in a non-linear way and don't have to worry about the timeline at all. And on the right hand side we have a, a classic timeline, an arrangement with you know all your material. Uh, we're probably not going to use that so much today. We also have the different tracks here aligned um, in a nice order. They have different content, obviously. We'll have some, some instruments and some, some audio here somewhere as well. Let me just uh, select that and bring up the editor so we can see it. Yeah. Uh, and you'll see that Bitwi Studio is kind of flexible in the way that you can load different content and put them together. So I'm, I'm rambling already. So just a few more points before we get started, just so you kind of know what I'm doing when I'm doing things. Because so I don't, yeah, so I'm not too fast. Um, so you can't follow. Um, I'm going to bring up what we call the pop-up browser, which is essentially um, a browser that pops up. <laughs> and <laughs> this is the way to insert instruments, to insert effects, um, to kind of bring stuff into the project. And I can show you real quick just an example. So I'm going to load a, to the right hand side, by the way, I have all the different devices. I'm going to load a, a polysynth. So if I'm going back to the device chain, this is now a very naked, bare bone kind of uh, instrument track, if you will. It consists of one boring polysynth, which plays a very simple sound. Let's see, I'm going to stop the sound and going to use this on-screen keyboard to play some sound. Let's see. Yeah. I think you can follow when I play, right? You can see that nicely. I could have like a normal MIDI keyboard or something connected, but I just want to keep it simple. I'm just going to keep playing on, 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 this, on this keyboard. So this is a very simple patch. It's a, it's a standard subtractive synthesizer with two oscillators, a filter, and a little bit of everything. Doesn't have any effects, doesn't have any LFOs, doesn't have anything of that. And that's kind of the philosophy behind Bitwi Studio is to keep things modular. So the, the building blocks are simple and stripped down, and you can simply add the things you want to enrich the, the instrument in a very flexible way. So that brings us to the modulation system. So you'll see that every device in Bitwi Studio has this modulator panel that you can fold out. I'm just going to hit a plus button here, and you'll see, uh, again, another pop-up browser showing me all the different modulators that are available. I'm going to go ahead and choose the classic LFO. And I've, noted, uh, I've now loaded a classic LFO into the, uh, the polysynth. I have some settings for that that I can fold out. And I also have this um, assign modulation button, I think it's called. And when I hit that, you'll see that all the different parameters turn a little bit bluish. That means that I can assign them. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start assigning a little bit of modulation to s a bunch of different parameters just to show you how it easy it is and how flexible it is. I can assign any number of parameters, any amount, in any direction. And I can immediately see what's happening. Let's undo that. And things start to move nicely. And that's not only pretty, it's also very helpful because I know what's going on and I know the different movements. So if I play a note. you'll hear that uh, the sound is moving and things are happening. And the reason I'm showing this is because together, the modulation system, together with this stuff, is awesome. So we'll get back to that later. Um, 
Yeah, so I think we can start with a bunch of different techniques, different use cases or different scenarios. And if there's anything that's unclear, if I'm too fast or too slow or whatever, just uh, raise your hand or stomp your feet or whatever you need to do to, to stop me and ask me any questions. Yeah? So starting with a new project, starting from blank. I'm going to set up a um, super simple little loop here because I think many people who are here in Schneidersladen work with hardware a lot and that's the starting point. So I'm just going to go ahead and patch things while you watch. <laughs> it's not at all uncomfortable. So. It's a very simple little patch with a filter and a little rever reverb for niceness. And one oscillator played by a sequencer called Mux Slicer from Befaco. Actually skip that. I'm gonna go straight to the source here. So we should be getting some sound. Yeah, and gonna patch this up. So the reason I'm actually starting from scratch is just because for me personally, when I watch people do stuff, I get, yeah, it gets super, um, super confusing when there's a lot of things already patched up. So I'm just doing this manually in front of you just so people who are less experienced can kind of follow and see actually how to do something from scratch. Now, I'm not a professional by any means. I just happen to do this a lot in my own time. So, I'll bring this up here. So, a very simple patch. So if you're working with this stuff, maybe you want to record it into the computer, yeah? Um, the way I've set this up is via a aux. Let's see if I can do that here. I'm just going to choose my input here in the, mass, uh, in the audio. Maybe you can see that up there, you're getting a signal in, in the audio track. And this is now just audio played. It's not synced up to my project in any way. That's the next step. So just so we have something to reference, I'm gonna play us a little drum clip that I have here. I'm going to up the BPM. Let's see how this sounds. So they're not synced up in any way. By, th by the way, I should mention there's no MIDI here involved at all. That's uh, interesting by, by d in uh, uh, what I'm, what, what's the word I'm looking for? There are certain advantages to that. Let's let me put put it that way, and I'll, I'll uh, demonstrate that at, at a later stage. So anyway, I have this drum loop, and I have this different. Uh, I have this little loop going on, and I want to sync it up. So going back to the uh, the computer screen, please. I'm going to use the first instrument track, and I'm going to load up a device called clock out. Now this sends out analog clock as through my audio outputs and I'm gonna choose the next available one which is number three and if you switch to the, uh, the camera it's hard to see but there's some blinking going on here in port number three so I'm sending out the pulse here 
and I'm just gonna patch that up to the clock in of my mood slicer. Okay, sinks. And number four is my reset, so I'm gonna put that here. Turn it up a little bit. Oh, do it here. So now it syncs and I can start doing recording or I can start doing um, yeah, different things with the melody. And I'm just going to capture the melody right now as it is. So if we go back to the screen, I'm just going to hit, hit record on this clip. So it's captured and let's have a look. You'll see if everything goes as planned. Well, it's not perfect, but it's pretty damn close and you can do different settings to kind of make things super tight. Again, working outside MIDI, this is all in the audio realm, meaning that everything is on point and super high quality, super high resolution signal. So, I'm gonna bring down the clock here because it's a bit too fast. Okay, so that's a, a very kind of basic loop. Maybe I want to enrich it by some, I can either you know, do the manual movement or I can show you how I can control the hardware from the software. That's why we're here, right? So in my hardware instrument chain, I'm gonna add another device, which is called CV Out. You don't like it? Yeah? I'm, I'm joking, of course. I know, I know you like it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're on the screen now. So I've just added this CV out, which is a super basic device, which is essentially just a software knob that I can send out control voltages. So I need to select an output, and the next one available is number five. So let's patch up number five to something. And of course, we're gonna patch it to the cutoff of the filter because that's what one does. Now I have now software control over my hardware filter in a quite a nice and neat way. And that means that I can start doing things on the computer side to record. So I can, for instance, start recording. Actually, no, I'm not going to record. I'm going to do uh, an automation clip. Get away. There we go. And I'm gonna do some automation write action. Whoops. Oh, my mistake. I'm in the wrong track. My bad. Okay, try again. Okay, so that wasn't a very good recording, but the principle is that you can record movements of parameters as automation in the software. Now I have this automation curve. And I can start writing or drawing my patterns. I can start doing things that might be difficult to do on the hardware side. I like it actually. <laughs> yeah. And uh, 
That can also, of course, be done in the arrangement, and you can do longer recordings. This is just a very short loop. And, of course, as we looked at earlier, we also have the possibility to modulate stuff with our eminent modulation system. So, I'm going to reset the button here. Actually, let me kill the automation so we don't get any interference. Now, in my CV out module, I'm going to again open up the modulation panel, click the plus button, and let's grab a classic LFO. Again, I can just assign it to anything, in this case, the one knob. Now, this is now free running, but of course I want to tempo sync it. And I have many, a myriad of different options that I can work with here that may or may not be difficult to achieve in the hardware world. So of course you can sync up LFOs and you can all do all sorts of modulations in as hardware, but computers are really good at this stuff, so we can use this and do really advanced stuff. So this is a very basic kind of modu uh, LFO modulation. And I can combine modulators. So I have the option to add as many or as few as I want and if I just hit the plus button I can just keep on adding as many as I want all the different kinds of modulators and I can modulate the modulators so let's try to use the step sequencer to modulate the phase of the LFO actually I'm gonna So that was a very simple example of how you can control stuff uh, with CV out and then bring the audio back in. Um, another thing that you may want to do is to have audio in between studio that we're going to run through analog stuff and back. So let's see if we can bring some example of that. I'm just going to give this guy a rest. And let's see. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's pretty cool that you have um, such a cool computer where you can actually paint, so to say, with a pencil automations. Mm -hmm. But uh, what if you don't have such a cool thing? How, uh, are there other ways to, to yes. write automations? Yes. Like with a mixer or something? Or yeah, you can record. Yeah, you can if you have like a MIDI controller or if you have. Yeah. Also, yeah. Yeah, um, you can do it with the mouse. You can you can draw curves with the mouse. You can. Yeah. 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 Sure. So let's say you have a MIDI controller with some knobs. You can assign um, these parameters through a MIDI controller and then record mm. the takes. That you you know you do your sweeps with the with the knobs, okay. things like that. <laughs> One more question. Yeah. Uh, you just you you use the CV from the bitway to to modulate the the decks. Um, can I especially with the ES8? Can I record CV input because I like analog sequences like the Max Master and stuff? Just record my jam, save all this automation I do with the sequences or my LFOs. Save it with zero latency and then automatize what I got, slice it up. 
short answer, yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me think. So, you, so, but what what you're doing is that you're sending uh, yes, modulation. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So it, I mean, it's, it's it essentially CV and audio is the same thing. Yeah. Um, so you can just record it as audio, and then reuse or misuse or reuse that audio as automation again to send out to your to your equipment. So I'm just going to grab a random audio clip here. Uh, that was a bit too bassy, sorry. Need something with a little more grip. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to send this out to the filter. And I'm going to do some uh, filter effects on it and then I'm gonna send it back and record it so I have let me grab another cable I'm gonna destroy all my previous work Yeah, so, so the question is if the modulation is re uh, recorded into another track or assigned to another track. Yeah, you can assign, yeah, this, it would be the same thing. You would record it as audio. Yeah. Or is that, is, did I understand your question right? Yeah. So I can use it also for another track later? Um, in theory, yes. Yeah. Theory. In theory. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't know how to do it just straight off the bat, but I, with some work, it would be possible to set it up. Now, if you want to use the, the modulation for, for later for sure, for yeah. No, I mean, if you record it as audio, then you have it as audio, which you can then use as a modulation source for anything in any track anywhere. Um, so, where am I? Yes. I'm just going to create a very simple... <coughs> ...routing here, and let me explain. I'm sending this uh, to 3 and 4 on my ES8. This is going through the filter here, and then going back as 3 and 4 uh, input. I'm going to add a separate audio track and choose 3 and 4 here. So we should get some audio here. It's a bit low. So now I have very easy control and very uh, and very easy way to kind of analogify my digital stuff because a lot of people like the analog sound but they like the conveniency of working in the box and this way you can combine both worlds of course nothing is stopping us from doing the same old trick that I showed you earlier of just creating a bit of uh, animation again I'm gonna just go ahead and assign some modulation to the filter and on the topic of this not being MIDI I'm gonna do some audio rate modulation um, I'm adding a <coughs> excuse me an LFO modulator and I'm gonna set it to work in the kilohertz range and I'm gonna assign it to the cutoff of the filter and 
this is something that I, I use a lot in my music because it gives this really otherworldly tonality. And you can have a lot of fun with different timbers with this. Of course, when you modulate modulators, it gets even more interesting. So let's add a random one and start randomizing the speed of the LFO. Yeah, you get the idea. Yes? So um, this is all running in the audio realm, right? So it depends on the, the uh, latency you have for your audio settings. So if you jump <coughs> into the audio settings here, I'm currently running at uh, 128 samples uh, audio buffer. This of course depends on, on your setup if you have a strong machine that can do a low latency. But uh, I mean, there, there shouldn't be any uh, mismatch between what's happening here and here because it's all in the same domain, which is the audio domain. Is that answered? I guess That's more or less. Yeah. I suppose if you're, if you're sending the clocks out, then it would be synchronized. But if you were running <coughs> sequencer externally, then the latency would probably affect it, right? Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't be exactly in sync. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's analog. So you will have some, you know, some some kind of uh, imperfections, I guess. But in in theory, it should be pretty perfect. Uh, you have you might have to set set it and do some some tweaking. Uh, but it should it should be synced up. I mean that's uh, way better than MIDI. Let's put it that way. Uh, yeah. Let's say I already have an audio interface. Uh, can I still use that that thing you're having there to? Connected to a modular uh, synthesizer. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it depends. If you have this, this connects via light pipe. So ah. if you have like an ADAT oh, in out, ADAT. Oh, that's great. then cool. you can use this as a pure extension of the audio interface you oh, have. That means I can stack them yes. Like I can use more of these things. Yes. Oh, that's great. Yes. Cool. So it would be in this case you could have two connected, and then you would have sixteen out and eight in. There's also a new model, the ES9 from Expert Sleepers, which has more in and outs. Mm. So I check it out. It. Yeah. Uh, Another question? Yes, please. Uh, when you're doing the software kind of modulation before on the filter, can you apply those LFOs to the clock rate or the clock rate fits once you hit play? Mm. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by clock rate in this, in this setup. Uh, you were sending an analog clock. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's correct, yeah. So inside Bitwig, can you assign an LFO or a square wave to the clock? Yes, rate? yes. So the sequence of doubles or halves? Yes, it? sir, yes. Yeah. And that's a lot of fun. Uh, you can get really interesting <laughs> effects and really wonky rhythms. I, I, if uh, I better hurry up so I <laughs> have time to show all this these, these stuff, but that's actually on, on my agenda or my to-do list for today. So... Actually, now we haven't even touched how to play notes from B2 Studio on this. So that might be the logical next example. Again, removing all the, the dirty stuff here to have some kind of a blank slate. So I'm going to show how to send out notes, because this is a sequencer after all, and control like a, a synth voice, um, an analog synth voice from, from within B2 Studio. Uh, we're going to start in the software. I've got a new blank project. I'm going to add, again, open up the pop-up browser, adding what's called the CV instrument. So this is our device to send out note information to the hardware. And first I have to define my, my pitch and my gate output. So I'm going to set pitch to output 3. And that goes into the 1 volt per octave input on the oscillator. My gate out is number four, and this triggers the envelope, which in turn opens the VCA, which I realized that I haven't even connected yet. So let's do that quickly. Of course, via the filter, 
because that's what synthesizer is all about. And bringing up, where are you? Bringing up the the on-screen keyboard, we should be getting some. So on and so forth. So we need a backing track, of course. Uh, I like these things. Let's get something. I hope I find something. Oh, that's a bit too drastic. Yeah. Did we already have that? Let's let's play this guy or or girl. Okay, so I need to do some tweaking. Whoa. So, as you can see, I can I can instantly play the voice from my my keyboard. Just gonna Got a silly note clip going on. Here you'll see oops, funny looking lines. And this is the, the pitch, the micro pitch information uh, that I did with the, the pitch slides. So if you have a, a MIDI controller that does MPE or whatever, this stuff gets recorded here. So you can do all sorts of funny, funny sweeps. I was gonna quantize this, but I don't think it's necessary because it's, yeah, whatever. Stop. Now, of course, analog oscillators, they don't know what a note is. They just get some kind of voltage and they don't know what to play. They just play whatever they can. So one thing that we should do is to tune the oscillator. Um, I'm going to use um, a s another output from my oscillator and patch it back into Bitwig Studio. I um, have an um, unavailable input here. And before I do that, let's bring down the volume. So. We're now feeding back the audio into Bitwig Studio, so we can start the tuning process by hitting the button. Bitwig Studio plays, I believe, 10 octaves or something and analyzes what comes in, so it can create this kind of curve that we'll see soon. Bim. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna undo this and we play again. Let's hear. Much better, right? Now, having this note clip, I can do all the things that you usually do in a sequencer. You can add notes, you can uh, do edits, you can cut out parts. Uh, but just to save time, I'm gonna more or less leave it as it is. And if I want to record this, of course, I do the, the thing that I usually do. It's a bit low, but yeah, you get the idea. So I can now capture, capture my takes as audio and so on and so forth. And that's essentially it. That's a very easy way to, you know, integrate your, your synth voice or whatever you have into Bitwig Studio. But that's only the most simple voice you can imagine. Um, I've already showed you how to modulate stuff, so actually let's do that some more. This time I'm gonna use an output from my audio interface as some FM action and open up my device chain again and excuse me add a, a cvr device where are you there you go it's number five add another modulator and you probably guessed what's going to happen next do some fming A 
maybe I don't want the full amount of FM all the time. Maybe I just want it to begin with or the other way around. So I'm gonna add an envelope to the amount of the LFO. Yeah, it's a bit hard to hear, but that's the general idea. Uh, we also have a bunch of note effects. We have, for instance, arpeggiators, uh, note repeaters, note echoes, all sorts of different things. Uh, I'm going to load a clip onto this, which has some chord Actually, let me grab a long chord. Yeah, let's grab this one. Because the notes are too short to hear. Okay, I just loaded this note clip playing... Uh, a polyphonic note clip playing the, uh, the monophonic uh, synth voice. Never mind that. That's only because I want to, as a next step, activate an arpeggiator. Using all the devices at our hand, we can do a lot of creative things and do a lot of things that might be hard or even impossible to do in here. I'm gonna bring down the gate length. And I'm gonna add a note echo. And one earlier question was if you could modulate the clock. So let's actually show that by modulating the arpeggio rate. Um, let me grab this LFO. Let's try this, but I want to have it much slower. And I'm going to assign it to the speed. So that's scratching the surface of how we can work with notes pl to play synth voices in, uh, in the Eurorack world. Um, so it's already been almost an hour. So I'm going to go into the grid for, for a while, a short while. I'm not sure how much time we have left. Um, I'm going to open up a new project, again, blank slate. And I'm going to show you the grid quickly what, what it is. So the grid is, um, like I said, a, a modular sound design environment that lives in two different devices. One is an instrument, and one is an audio effect. And opening it up quickly, it's a... Uh, uh, okay. You can get an idea on what it can do. So it's it's uh, it's a workspace where you can build synthesizers, build effects, build drum machines, and all sorts of things. Um, I'm not going to dive into that because we're running out of, out of time. So I'm just going to show you how you can control stuff in the hardware world using modules that are available here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to destroy the patch here, destroy everything, and start out with a completely blank slate. We already have a synth voice set up, so I'm going to use that to show my next thing. I am going to grab a CV output module, and I'm going to create a tiny little gate sequence. And this is now connected to number four. 
So we should get some. I'm going to add some pitch because this is only gate. I'm going to add a secondary output to control pitch. This is of course number 3, already patched up. Gotta love this default sound. Ominous. Since we already have, we have one more oscillator, we might as well use that as well. I'm going to set up a secondary voice. Let's use this. Ah, uh, this is too long. Five and six. Won't be long now. the CV out. I believe this is number five, six to open the, uh, open the gate. Actually, let's add uh, the pitch and use the same And this is number five. So the reason I'm doing this is because I want to show you how um, time works in the grid. Uh, we use phase, which is essentially a, uh, a waveform, a ramp waveform going from zero to one and anything in between is the timing so one bar might be one cycle and you can modify how that curve looks in very interesting ways and I'm gonna highlight one of, one of the gate sequences you see up here to the left you'll see the timing as a waveform that's ramping up and what I like to do is mess up and create weird rhythms. So I'm gonna just insert something in between the phase input let's see I'm gonna use first I'm gonna show bend maybe what I'm doing now is I'm bending the face curve that controls the timing. Which is... Um, a good demonstration of why it's cool to work with phase instead of just working with a pulse because with pulses you can't really achieve these kind of results I can insert a mirror module instead which as the name implies mirrors the phase signal so it will first go forward and then go backwards
music that kids listen to these days. I don't know. <laughs> and <laughs> God damn. Actually, let's pronounce the tempo. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing all day long. I'm just creating weird rhythms by bending time, which is a lot of fun. I think we have time for one more thing, maybe, if I'm quick. Or maybe which which one should I take? Which one should I pick? Yeah, okay. This one. Okay. So I'm gonna open up the grid again. And I'm gonna play the audio is only happening in the digital world, so it's only coming from the grid, but I'm gonna modulate it using hardware. So I'm just gonna clean up this mess that I left behind from a minute ago. Bear with me for a second. Oui. I have a hardware LFO here. So this is a pingable quad LFO, I believe it's called, from 4MS. Yes, quad pingable LFO, that's right here. So this I'm going to send into, actually, I'm going to free myself of this, into the grid. And I'm going to control the oscillator pitch um, by CV in, and that's number one, sending it here. I'm just going to create a little gate thing happening to open up. Oof. So that's pretty boring. Just controlling the pitch, very basic, very straightforward. Let me actually add a filter here so we don't get too loud. Uh, no, this one. And I'm gonna set up a bunch of ways to manipulate the signal coming in that controls the pitch of the oscillator. Make sense? Yeah. And uh, let's first, because I've done, th done this before, I need to have an attenuator to bring down. The signal. I'm gonna add a semitone quantizer in between. Now we're starting to hear stuff, yeah? If you make this slower. I want to sync up the LFO, so let me just create that real quickly. Um, add a clock out. I'll put number three. That's my ping signal to the LFO to behave. I'm not playing. Sound is a bit naked. For our listening pleasure, I'm going to add a reverb. And 
let's add some shapers to further destroy the signal. Let's try here. Okay, a bit too fast, a bit too crazy. Add it here instead. No? Okay. Yeah, so essentially the grid is just full of little ways to manipulate signals in different ways if it's coming from inside the software or if it's coming from outside uh, in the hardware world. And yeah, that was a very basic example. I think, I think we're going to end now. It's been an hour. And I've shown you the, uh, the weirdest examples that I have. And yeah. That's it for my, and maybe before you start, maybe some questions, any open questions? No? All good? Yeah? Can we create our own modules on the grid? <laughs> no? <laughs> that would be super cool. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's leave it at not yet. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we should be able to encapsulate them because uh, so many applications for this would be really helpful. <laughs> yes. Perhaps, yeah. Okay, so that's it for me. Thank you very much for coming. It was a pleasure.